Hey folks, welcome to The Zone. Apologies that the video is a little bit late today. We're just having a quick five minute chat about the loss of Manchester United to Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. Um, had a few comments in my live stream saying, hey, there's not been a video. I'd like you to talk about it, which I always appreciate. Uh, I always appreciate when people ask me to do these videos because sometimes I'm not sure if anyone's interested. So without further ado, let's have a chat about the game. There's not too much to say about the actual game in this scenario i actually think in a in a bit of a weird way we played quite well in the opening half i think there was actually for the first time overlapping there was crossing there was people trying to get in the box there wasn't too many stupid shots there was nice what i would call sensible shooting good link up play and we should have been about 5-0 up. This isn't one of those games where there are half chances and you're like, oh, we should have been 5-0 up. The game should have been wrapped up. No, this is actually one of those. You had to be 5-0 up. Missing a penalty. Okay, anyone can miss a penalty. It happens. I get it. Missing an open net. Almost unacceptable. It's a lack of concentration. It's a lack of care. It's, it's something else going on. Hitting the crossbar. Many, many chances going. And we should have been 5-0 up. Uh, we go 1-0 up. And then we just have this... I'm going to call it like a... I honestly think it was like a defensive lapse from Varane and Pogba again. Like, they're just... They're happy to let people roam free behind them. Kind of in and around. And, I, I, you know, I've got Pogba on the back of my shirt. But he, unfortunately, he's not the player... I thought we were getting. Um, he's sort of a, a defensive midfielder that that isn't very defensive um, in a strange way. He's a left winger and not a left winger and a number 10 and not a number 10. But this loss is not on Pogba and it's also not on Ranić. I don't think Ranić could have done much else other than walk onto the pitch and put the ball in the net. There is a fundamental problem, and this is what I'll speak about just for the last minute. There's a fundamental problem at Manchester United as to why I'm bored of watching them it feels pointless supporting them and nothing is really going to change and it doesn't matter how many people moan on fan cams or how many fans voice their opinions, it's the owners. And I'm sure other fans don't really get it. Other fans of other clubs don't understand what Man U fans are moaning at because on the table of it, they spend a lot of money and that's the, that is the problem. They're spending our own money, not investing at all into the club and also controlling who purchases who and who goes where or who doesn't go where. I think the entire situation of last night's match can be strangely surmised by Jesse Lingard and that's all I've really got to say. Jesse Lingard went to the Manchester United club doctors or the club and said to them, he said to them something and the club advised him, you can have a few weeks off. Those are his words on Twitter. The club advised me, after basically what I'd said, to have a few weeks off. I'm always willing to play for Man United. Ranić is wrong. Ranić was not wrong. Ranić wanted to select you, Jesse Lingard. He wanted to have you in the squad. But he was unable to because you didn't want to play because of the things you told the club. There is also another problem that Ranić very clearly wanted to get rid of Jesse Lingard. And yet, when asked why didn't Jesse Lingard um, disappear in the transfer window, he was told, the club have decided he will remain here. Not me, not the manager like he's in my plans. It was, no, the club has told me that, hey, he's with you now. And then the same player that got forced to stay, or whatever, we don't know the full situation, but he then said, well, I'm not playing. And it's this complete lack of disrespect for the interim manager Martial coming out and saying he was lying and then going to have his debut at Sevilla and getting pulled off with 15 minutes to go because he was awful. We had Jesse Lingard coming out and saying that. Now, would they be saying that about Sir Alex Ferguson? No. Number one, Ranić's been put in an awful position because they know he's not going to be the manager. It's very clear at this point. Otherwise, they would have bought him some players of his style in the January transfer window. So they know he's not going to be the main manager so they can fuck about and talk shit about him and all of this. The owners to have no idea about football yet run, try to run the club rather than just saying, hey, let's employ a load of football people and stop wasting money because they waste a ton of money, absolute ton of money. That's the thing about the Glazers. Everyone says they're fantastic businessmen, but they actually waste a ton of money. And it seems strange to talk about being knocked out of the cup, but being knocked out of the cup doesn't come as a surprise to me. We haven't won the league in a decade, pretty much. We haven't won a trophy in five seasons. 
Manchester United losing is not a new concept to me. It's been a decade of no title challenge and losing match after match after match. It's not a new feeling. When we lost that FA Cup game, I wasn't even bothered because the truth is I thought we're not going to beat Liverpool, Man City or Chelsea anyway in the Cup. We're not going to win it. It's kind of like you're in Everton and you get knocked out by Queen's Park Rangers and you think, well, we probably weren't going to win it anyway, so it's okay. And when you have that mentality in and out of the club, you never get anywhere because you just think, well, we're never going to win it, so what's the point of beating these? And then you never get anywhere because you never actually beat the people you meant to. So I just think it's a massive, massive failure about, I think Ranić's been done over. I think he should be our permanent manager and allowed to actually manage. Look, I don't care if he's not got the CV that people think he's got. I, I Just put him as the full-time manager and let him get rid of people that he wants to get rid of. Um, there are signs that we are conceding far, 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 far less than under Oli. We actually look fairly stable in defence. Um, they just had one freak goal. And uh, do I need to talk about it? Look, by the letter of the law, it's technically not handball. But we all know that was handball. Because if he didn't reach out and it didn't bounce down off his hand, there would be no way he would be able to cross it across, right? Now, fair enough if it brushed his hand, and as it was brushing his hand, it went up and he headed it across, but he didn't. He, he changed the direction of the ball, which allowed him to do a pass. But that's not the reason we lost. I think we lost because the club, I will say at this point, is in the worst it's ever been. It, it really has, because... It's very clear now to everyone that properly supports Manchester United that it's never going to change. The owners are very happy in doing what they're doing. Probably going to invest some money because Tom Brady's left into their NFL team. And all of it really doesn't matter. All of these fan cam reactions and all of this doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, if we go and beat Liverpool 5-0, we'll go and lose to West Ham. We'll go and lose to someone else. And we're never going to be on a title run. And we never quite get the players and the mentality of the squad because there's so much player power at the club. There never used to be player power under Sir Alex, but now there is. The players have been there for a decade. They've got away from the, the Sir Alex era. And they go into the media. They do all of this. And the manager isn't allowed to control it. The manager says, hey, this guy's doing this and that and this. I'd like to get rid of him and shift him on get some new blood into the dressing room, get people energised and ready to fight for next season. And then they're like, well, he's got a transfer value, so we can't sell him and he's got a train or blah, blah, blah. And you can't manage a club when a group of owners that don't understand football are overriding you at every given moment, strangely. You would think that the Glazers would be hands off and say, look, we don't know much about football. We know Man United is a famous brand. We'll give you the money and employ the football people you run it yourself pretty much and come to us if there's any major problems. But no, it's like they're meddling constantly. Um, and it's all just a bit pointless. I don't really feel anything when I watch Man United because I know ultimately it's not going anywhere. That's kind of how it is. Like Even if we were to go and win our next five games, I just think to ourselves, myself, well, we're not winning the Champions League. We're not winning the league. We're not in any cups. So that's it, isn't it? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. And if I want to talk about little things like <clears throat> going on Twitter and posting like prayers for Alanga and heart emoji Alanga and all this, look, Alanga should never be in that position flat out. Alanga's a, a, a youth team player that's been thrown in the deep end because we're, we're not allowed to buy any players for the new manager. And... Bruno missed an open net, Ronaldo missed a pen, other people missed huge chances, and it was like the De Gea situation. Yeah, De Gea missed that pen in the Europa League final, but it should never be getting to that. Think about it, our last two, like, kind of, I would call big exits, Europa League final, keeper had to take a pen, it should never get to that stage, and Alanga taking a pen, should never get to that stage, it should be dead and buried versus Middlesbrough. You can blame Ranić and think about it, but look, I'm telling you, mate, Flat out, it's not Ranić's fault. If you properly look into the situation, the club is pretty fucked. It doesn't help that you've got people like Gary Neville and all the old lot telling people how it should and shouldn't be. The two, it's like they're in the storm and they can't see the clouds. Like you need an outside opinion. Ranić is the outside opinion. And if you'll know, he came in and said, don't like Maguire, don't like Shaw, don't like wan don't like Lingard, um never played Martial, 
you know, he went and actually tried to do something to fix the problem, and they all just, he just basically got told, "Nah, you can't do that, mate." And then the players know, "Oh, he's got no power." So it's a never-ending spiral, uh, and that's how I think about it. I uh, when I watch Man U, I don't even really think about the game these days. I kind of just think about the interaction between the manager and the players and the board because the more you watch it, the more it's messed up. Like Darren Fletcher sat next to him. But they're not even buying any players for Ranić because they don't believe he's going to be the manager, right? They didn't get any players in for January. So what is he doing sat next to him? The director of football. If the director of football isn't talking to Ranić and been like, oh yeah, in these 10 games I sat next to you, I can see we need a DM. I'll go chat to them or whatever and we'll get one. He didn't get anyone. So what's the point of that? He may as well have had a different assistant that he used to, that he used to know and work with, right? But... It's all like jobs for the boys and all that. And it's it's a bit tedious talking about that. I couldn't even bother to turn on the camera today to talk about it, to be blatantly obvious, because I just thought, what's the point? Like, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I'm always going to go and watch the matches and stuff and enjoy them in my own way. But it's, it's a bit like, it feels a bit pointless. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Um, maybe check out some of my other videos. I'm trying to get my watch time up to help me become a partner and I need a thousand subscribers. So if you've enjoyed it, hit the sub button. New channel, trying to grow. Thanks very much. Have a great evening. Catch you on the next one.